Good afternoon, radio listeners and viewers, and welcome to the news behind the news with Ralph Kentav on Mix 94.7 FM. Now, as promised, um, this the month of November will be a month that we will particularly feature a lot of conversations about Samaritan history and culture, and specifically of you know the entire island. Now, today or this afternoon, I have uh, before me a great gentleman, uh, someone who uh, is a wealth of knowledge, uh, particularly focused on um, the French side. And, and you know, um, we at St. Martin, we are one island. Uh, even as we are soon <coughs> about to celebrate St. Martin Day, it is not just about one side. And we've seen where there have been many instances in our history, but even recently, that as a people we come together for um, a common goal, as, as recent as um, ensuring that there remains an open border between us, as that is something very critical to you know, our, our identity, but also in our economy, in our, our social values, etc., so I would like to welcome you to the program, Mr. Gums. I have with me Franz Gums, a former president of the Collectivité, uh, an educator as well, and a lover of St. Martin. <laughs> so thank Absolutely. you for coming to the show. It's my pleasure. I'm Good glad afternoon. to be here with you. Okay, great. Um, so I'm glad that you accepted the, the invitation. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the reasons as well that I brought you on and as we spoke off air is the fact that um, I could definitely sense that a lot of us here on this side of the island, you know, we're not too familiar with, um, let's say, uh, the political system in the north. And um, sometimes, you know, like, let's say, when we saw protests about maybe, let's say, the PPRN and so forth, we just know, hey, there's, there's a protest over there, but <laughs> we don't know the, the details of those matters. Mm -hmm. But before we get into that, um, I would just like to, yeah, allow you to share your experience of growing up in St. Martin. I know you, that you are from the uh, village of uh, French Quarter, <laughs> right? <laughs> It's, it's, it's a little more complicated than that. Okay, give me the details. Um, my, my father my father is from French Quarter, okay. the Gums, and my mother is from Marigot, Concordia. My mother, my, my father's a Gums, evidently, and my mother was a Richardson, a Richardson from uh, Concordia. A great gentleman by the name of Joseph Emmanuel Richardson was uh, my great-grandfather. So I was basically born... Um, uh, living in Marigot when I was born, but I was born in the St. Rose Hospital in Phillipsburg. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> okay, so um, because of the fact that my mother was, ca was carrying a twin, I am half of a twin, I have a twin brother. Uh, of course, in 1954, most people would make babies in their house, in their homes, yes. and, and the midwife, whoever had that qualification, would go to the home and deliver the baby. But because it was a complex uh, um, pregnancy with, with, with a twin, and that the hospital on the French side was not as uh, reliable, let's, let's put it like that, as the hospital in Phillipsburg, the St. Rose Hospital, uh, my mother was brought to Phillipsburg. Uh, we were born there, and, uh, and, and a few days after that, we were taken back to, to Marigot, to where we lived, uh, in a small house in, in Gallus Bay, very precisely. Mm. And um, I, I do not have uh, really precise souvenirs of, of, of what, what takes place before I am, I am 15 or 16, uh, because of the fact that um, uh, I was very, very sick. I mean, I was a, a heavy asthmatic. And uh, what I could remember is that it disappeared at age 12. Hmm. I, uh, I have an explanation, but um, some, of the thing, some of the things at that time that pe people believe could uh, help you get over asthma is some, some old-time remedies that uh, older people might know, like... like um, uh, tisane made of um, how you call that bush again? Uh, they call it gluten and st stingent thyme. Mm. Stingent thyme seems to have some effect in soothing your your respiratory tract when you're asthmatic. But I also heard that if you boil a lizard into milk <laughs> and you give that to an asthmatic, it could help. I am not convinced of that. That one, uh, <laughs> the, the tisane. I, yeah. <laughs> I I'm not convinced of that, but. All, all the people, all the Correct. folks, do, do say that. Uh, but one of the things I truly believe uh, that helped me 
you know, at that time, um, my, my family, uh, my mother used to work in what you used to call a Mary. My, my father is a carpenter, excellent carpenter, by the way, with excellent reputation. And um, <coughs> so both of them working, um, they had uh, what we used to call a servant coming in and, and, and taking care of the food and the children that were small and things. And this lady from St. James, when my mother would leave uh, me at home, if the sun was bright, she would tell, her, tell me, take off your stockings, take off your shirt, go be your back in the hot sun, barefoot on the hot ground. Mm. And um, I have the impression, I don't, cannot demonstrate it, of course, but I have the impression that that was uh, very helpful because at that time, uh, I was all the time cloaked up uh, marina shirt, uh, stockings, and I couldn't get no rainfall on my head and things like that. So very sheltered. Yeah, well, and my brother, my twin brother, was was uh, was not was not was the contrary. Uh, he was very uh, a very good sports um, person. He did a lot of sports growing up, so he was always outside and always always inside. This uh, permits me to say that um, when you are uh, uh, inside and you, you, you cannot have any outside activities, you have to keep yourself busy. And that is why I, I, I started to read very early and read plenty. Mm. I was an intensive reader. Avid reader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Very, 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 very intensive. I read uh, <coughs> books that um, children do not read mm. usually. I read uh, The Memories of General de Gaulle. The War Memories of General de Gaulle, a, a two-volume book, thick like this, and, and in uh, French, in French, yeah, Les Memoirs du Général de Gaulle, yeah. and and uh, 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 the memoir, yeah, yeah. And I read um, uh, um, very long books that usually children do not do not do you. not read. I so so I became an avid reader, really, so at that time because I was sick. Yeah. So, so, so it speak. kind of yeah. was a blessing in another sense. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. But, but then you were able to, to beat it too, which you, which you did. Then we, 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 I got over that. Uh, I went to school in, in Marigot. Yes, yeah, so uh, ask, where did you go to school? I went to school in Marigot. And uh, there, there, there is a, a um, kindergarten school that has a name today, Simeon Trott. But mm -hmm. Simeon Trott is a lady that used to receive kindergarten children and she was in the neighborhood where I used to live. We used to call her Miss Sissi. So I went by Miss Sissi School mm. <laughs> when I was very young. And, and then to, to primary school and Marigot, what we used to call the boys' school, I suppose. And then they had a girls' school somewhere else. And after that, that changed. Um, I, it appears that I was uh, pretty good in, <laughs> in primary school. But that's because I was reading a lot. So I had a lot really of knowledge. I didn't need to study. Uh, too much history and geography because I used to read yeah, a lot. And I could read, yeah, yeah, and taken. I, yeah, mm -hmm. and taken. And uh, at that time, um, the the secondary school, you didn't used to pass your baccalaureate on Saint Martin. You, uh, to make a comparison with the United States system, you have junior high, and you have high school. Uh, on the French side, you used to stop at junior high. And if you wanted to go high school, you had to go to Guadeloupe. Mm. And the end of high school is your baccalaureate. Gotcha. So I, I left, I was sent to Guadeloupe at the age of 15 or 16 uh, to high school because I had a sister that was a bigger sister than me that was living in Guadeloupe. So I went to high school, I passed my baccalaureate in Guadeloupe. And then, um, um, and, uh, in between, circumstances had it that my mother lost her job and complicated circumstances. We didn't have the same means as, as before. So I did go to Martinique uh, uh, to, to follow some, some studies. I did went to Metropolitan France also. What do you study, by the way? We call that, let's say, biology. Okay. And bi biology in general, because I wanted to be a lab technician. That was my dream at that time. 
but I did not finish the studies basically up to the up to the final stage of the of the of the diploma, <coughs> and I came back to Guadeloupe. I could not go back to France again. I came back to Guadeloupe because my grandmother used to live in in Guadeloupe, and uh, my Gua- my grandmother is from Guadeloupe. My mother mother is from Guadeloupe basically. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. And and uh, my my father family is from French Guadeloupe. Okay, so you're fine. Okay, uh, gotcha. Because <laughs> uh, well, uh, yeah, because I, I, I always thought you were born and born and raised in French Guadeloupe. No, 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 no. Gotcha. No, that's Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. your cousin, right? Yeah, my yeah. cousin. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so, being in Guadeloupe, basically, I had to look for a job. I had to look for a job, and I I I, I walked along in Pointe à Pitre in Guadeloupe to find a job in a lab. That's what I wanted to do. I did not find a job in a lab. Uh, but at that time, the, the, the rectorat, the school authorities, the academic authorities of Guadeloupe, they were looking for teachers, substitute teachers, basically, just like nowadays again anyway. And um, I, I got a job. I landed a job on the 12th of November to 1975. On the 12th of November, 1975, I landed uh, a job, my first recruitment, and I, I, I was requested to teach maths and physics, mm. maths, physics, and chemistry. That was my, the subjects that I, I had to teach. But what happened, where they sent me to teach in Guadeloupe is a remote commune uh, compared to where I was living. It, it would have taken me more than two hours of bus driving to leave where I was living and get to where my job is. And I, I, I had to find a solution. I had to be there for, for 8 o'clock in the morning, and I could not figure out how to get there. I, didn't, I, didn't, I never went to that place anyway. But then I discovered that uh, there was a, a, an internal flight, airplane flight, that flew from Puerto Pete, my area where I was living, to Les Saint, some small islands off Guadeloupe, back to Bastère, which is the closest place to where I was going to walk. So I took a plane from Puerto Pete that was supposed to go Les Saint, and then that was supposed to go Baif, and then Les Saint, but it did the different route. It went Les Saint first. Long story short, I did arrive in Bouillant with my slim self, very slim self, with my afro well put, Mm -hmm. and my briefcase, my Samsonite briefcase, going up this road to the Lycée Professionnel. And uh, the, the, the funny thing is that on that specific day, there was a strike going on in the school. (laughs) And because there was a strike, all of the kids, the children, we're out on the streets and on the external parts of the school, of the premises. And um, because it was a vocational school, I was close to 23, and some of the students were close to 19. So these young ladies, they're looking at a playboy coming up the road. They don't know he's going to be their teacher. So they started, psst, and all this kind of thing. <laughs> nice start <laughs> as a teacher. Interesting. Yeah. So I taught there for three years. I taught another place in Guadeloupe for six years. And then I came back in St. Martin around 19, in 1983, in 84. 80s. Yeah. And so what was it like then, um, you know, after, sp- after spending uh, quite a bit of time abroad, even though it was Guadeloupe, and moving back to St. Martin? Um, how was the welcome back home? What was it like as a young man? I guess maybe you were um, looking at ways you could contribute. What were the differences you noticed on the island, etc.? Look here. At that time, mm-hmm. at that time, I am young. <laughs> and um, at that time, I have a tendency of, how would I say that? Burning the candle by the two ends at the same time. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, I, I, I cannot say today that I had a consciousness uh, that, w- that would drive me to social activi- activism and, and things of the sort. I was living a hot life. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's a fact. And so, where, and where were the hot spots, by the way? Then the hot spots at that time. <laughs> um, Gus Disco. Uh, you had a place up in, um, in at the entrance of Fairs Bay up there. I don't know if you know that discotheque at the no. entrance of the disco. They had a place in uh, in, 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 in Sandy Ground. Where, no, they, I didn't <laughs> revise. Yeah, I got you. I got but, you. but they had some re- really, 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 really nice places uh, that you could spend the night and and um, and um, wait until uh, the sun rises <laughs> and get a bowl of soup somewhere. There was not as much cars as now. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was basically, according to me, no, no, no gunfights, no knife fights, and things like that. So, I mean, I never, I was never confronted in my life up to now with with, with that kind of experience where there was there's such animosity, animosity yeah, between yeah. people that it, it 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 people get hurt yeah. out of it. Uh, but at that time, I do not remember. People had a good time, a fairly good time. Um, um, this was before AIDS. And then you had AIDS. So I came to that age when I could have permitted myself to reduce my speed and <laughs> be careful. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So from hot to warm. Yes, I'm um, <laughs> back to warm. And then I got, I got, uh, I got married. And uh, you know, marriage, marriage is it does 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 carry up the temperature for some time. Yeah, yeah. But it don't keep the temperature to the maximum all the time, or or, or either you'd be burning off yourself. Yeah, got you. I got you. <laughs> I'm newly yeah. married, so I'll tell you. Learn from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, and then I had the the the, the activism mm-hmm. comes. With uh, more maturity, when when um, when I'm 30, um, I, I was married when I was 34. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, but um, uh, at the first invitation to be active in in uh, in a social activity was done by one of my old cousins, uh, Remo Richardson. He invited me to be on the board of the the Sandegrown Cultural Center. Okay. Yeah, and after that, I was invited to be on the on the board of the the carnival committee on the French side. Mm-hmm. I, I did like that basically. And after that, uh, um, I was I was part of so c- club services, some clubs, uh, the rotary yeah. club, yeah. Uh, up to now basically. And um, I was very active also. Um, in the 90s, in the 90s, when um, the, 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 there was a crisis, a political crisis, that we call the customs crisis, that I call the customs crisis on the French side. Can you detail that? Yes. And, and on the 14th of July, 1990, mm-hmm. um, is that 30 years ago, 31 years ago? Yeah. <coughs> the mayor of the time, Albert Fleming, in his 14th of July Bastille Day speech, he announces that the state, represented by the préfet of Bastille and Guadeloupe, has the idea or the intention to install customs on St. Martin, on French St. Martin. It has, in his mind, he explains that the, the consequences might be that they would uh, uh, install custom taxes, mm. which we did not have mm-hmm. before. So he did manage to rile up the population, and um, some major protest, public protest, took place on the, in the streets of, of Marigot at that time in 1990. Between that July speech and the end of the year, Several protest matches took place. There was something that was called the unity match at a certain time, which included uh, all the officials from the French side and the Dutch side. I still have a picture where I could see um, Vance James yeah. uh, giving a speech on that unity match uh, podium, as well as um, another person that was senator here at that time that was before, before probably Marcel was senator, but I forget her name now. Um, very well-known person, 
um, and it out of those protests mm -hmm. that an association by the name of Consensus, St. Martin People's Consensus Association, mm. was born. It was presided by Daniela Jeffrey. And the objective of that uh, association was precisely um, the system that governs us is not working for us. We need to change our political status. And we worked on that in 1990, 1991, and we produced a, a document, a consensus document, and it is that document, the studies that, that were made at that time, the arguments that were developed at that time, that leads directly to a referendum or a consultation, a public consultation that takes place in 2003. Mm -hmm. And that consultation, the, the answer to the question, the question being, uh, do you want to change status uh, and go into the framework of Article 74, or just breaking it down? Yeah, yeah. And that was the question, you want to change status or not? And the answer was yes for 74% of those who voted. But the percentage of participation was low. Do you remember the percentage of 42%. Oh, that, yeah, that's pretty low. That is pretty low. But we have to know that in 1990, that event, the customs crisis, crisis comes on the heels of a demographic tsunami that has taken place since 86, 87. With, so now you're touching on a defiscalization. Yes, yes, that, yes, know. yes. 86, Ponsula on defiscalization. But in 83, I understand, Stan Litty, there was a first tentative law on defiscalization that created a first movement. Okay. But it, it was not massive as the one that took place after 86. Gotcha. And 86, if my memory serves me well, <coughs> the French side has about 12,000 inhabitants, 86. And 88, two years after, the population is 24,000. It just doubles. Wow. It just doubles. 86, 88, and then 90, we are around 29,000, 28,000 something. Okay? Wow. And 90, no, no, imagine good, the, the, the social... Um, Upheaval that has taken place yeah, uh, d the, demographically, yeah. at least. It's, 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 like, it's like it's out of balance, and then your, your nation is literally being shocked with, with yeah. Wow. It is not evolution; mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. revolution that has taken place just like that quietly. I didn't know that. Wow. <laughs> okay, good. So, this customs crisis comes on the heels of that demographic tsunami that has taken place. Now, who are the people? who are, uh, let's say, carrying the, 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 the protest. It is the St. Martiners, I, what I call the traditional St. Martiners, traditional St. Martiners who are rooted in, in, in several generations. Those are carrying it because they don't want to lose whatever, uh, or, or they already feeling that they're losing whatever identity they claim they have. Let's say we claim we have. But on the other hand, because of that um, demographic situation that is evolving, you have a large community of metropolitans, Euro French Europeans, that are on the island at that time. They came because of that. There was an objective alliance between the St. Martinus and the metropolitans because the St. Martinus feel they was losing something, and if the customs come here with any kind of taxes, the Metropolitans didn't want that neither. Hmm. So there was this objective alliance between those two group of persons hmm. to say, let's change status so that we can keep the advantages, uh, the historic advantages that we benefit for, for nobody not, sure. to come, but yes, not, not, not to you. come and modify that. And it is that objective um, 
alliance or coalition between people who by nature uh, uh, would have not agreed on anything, but because everybody had an interest in changing at that time, it, it, it worked. Yeah. Now, prayer to that, prayer to that, in that context of a moving population, not moving alone, a galloping uh, population, the electoral list grows exponentially mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with people who are not yet stabilized on the, on the territory and who do not see or feel the, the real interest mm -hmm. in, in, in participating in a change of status or anything. What they see is the interest that there's money to be made and Correct. That's what, and some of them are coming for two years, for three years, and are going. <coughs> but the electoral list does not adjust itself to to a population that is moving gotcha. very gotcha. fast. I got you. Okay. Yes. So in two thousand three, in two thousand three, mm -hmm. my estimation is that the electoral list is overinflated. Because of the, the movement. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's overinflated. So when I say the participation is only 42%, but if you deflate the list to the reality of those who are stable who in the stable country, reason, yes. then the participation is different. Mm -hmm. the, but that's my reasoning. Gotcha. In St. Bats, the participation was close to 70%. But St. Bats was not subjected to that moving yeah, like, like size of yeah. demographics. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. It's so, more controlled. So it's... it's it's a more stable population. Mm -hmm. Population evolved naturally. Mm -hmm. the, evol the evolution of the population here was not a natural evol evolution, yeah. according to me. Yeah, so like rather than... <laughs> yeah, I, I'm glad you <laughs> explained that because I really... Uh, one of the things that definitely I had in mind to ask was about the defiscalization and what did that mean for St. Martin because um, from the main thing I get is, is it really boiled down to economic benefit for Europeans to come here. It boiled down to, to economic... Um, Economic benefits to European, most of which basically did not come here, mm. except for those who came for the 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 construction work, the restaurant work. You see, the, this was the fiscalization was aimed at at, at uh, tourism products, so hotels were built and now they are, they are no more in existence. Uh, they are they are made of they are made uh, to apartments now. Okay. Yeah. If you take Mont, yeah. Mont, Mont Vernon and uh, 250 rooms hotel, that was over there. But it was built under that law of defiscalization, which means to say uh, a person could stay in Paris and Bordeaux or Marseille and he gets the offer. If you invest uh, uh, 100,000 francs here, uh, then for the next 10 years, you, you would be uh, exempt of, of whatever income tax. Well, you, get, you get a tax break for that amount of years. But when you finish getting your tax break, you don't have no interest in keeping that investment anymore. Mm -hmm. So the best thing to do is to sell it out. And uh, you sell it. And, and when you sell it, the, the, uh, the, if, if you have 250 rooms and that you have 100 rooms that are sold out, the hotel only remains with a piece of, of its whatever assets it needs. Mm -hmm. The hotel has no more interest. And finally, everybody has an interest to sell. So they sold it in apartments for individuals. So it was not a bulk. It was just 250 different owners. That uh, So the, 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 the law benefited those people who defiscalized and then the people who came uh, for... for the, because, of course, if you're billing... Uh, that building, 250 rooms, if you're building at the same time, uh, the whole of Nettle Bay is, is being built up with, with hotels in different places. Uh, if you're building at the same time in Coup de Sac, you had other, other Les Alizés, in Orient Bay, you had the workforce that was present could not deal with it. That's what created the 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 the, the, the air. Yeah, the uh, influx. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Absolutely, because so the workforce could not deal with the amount of work that was provided in that short space of time. I understand. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll be right back. 
no problem. Good afternoon, viewers and listeners. You're tuned into the news behind the news. And this afternoon, I am joined with Mr. Franz Gums, uh, and he is uh, sharing with us some interesting stories, uh, not just his personal um, life, but also the development of the French side. Um, and so we, laugh, we last left off uh, the discussion about defiscalization mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, that interesting. Uh, boom that we've seen in population on the French side, which is, you know, which is interesting because, you know, you can, you can really see similarities on how both sides experience the same thing, but just uh, in a different system, uh, even politically, because you guys had your referendum in 2003 that led to um, the new status that you have. Ours, well, we had two, first in 94, then in 2000, but only our status only changed in 2010. But you also see lots of discussions about whether or not it was the right move and so forth. Um, but before we get into to that, um, change the change from the commune to collectivity, um, I would like to still touch a bit on the development of the economy. Um, can you, I guess, detail a bit more on, you know, uh, I guess like back in your days, what was what what was the bread and butter um, for the French side, and, and how <laughs> has how has it, you know, in, uh, I guess, gradually increased to to what we see today? The bread and butter for the French side was found on the Dutch side, hmm. basically. Because we must not forget that uh, tourism has begun development in the 60s, 70s, and it, 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 it has been growing at a very high rate from that time up to the 2000s lately here. We must not forget that Mullet Bay was built in 71. Yeah. And Mullet Bay was one of the major employers, not on the Dutch side, on the island. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, probably half of the employees were from the French side, <coughs> especially from French water, as a matter of fact. That, that is what I, I, I was the, told. The best cooks were from the French side. <laughs> Up to now, some of them are yeah. still exercising that profession. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the, the, the hotel industry was basically on the French side. The hotel industry became um, more important on the French side as of that defiscalization law. Mm -hmm. They built some hotels and they had up to maybe 3,000, more than 3,000 rooms, hotel rooms on the French side. But then as the, as the defiscalization law presented no more interest for those who were benefiting it, the, of course, the number of rooms came back down, came back down progressively as people were selling their, their goods in the, in, in the, in the hotels. Um, the, the, the competition with the Dutch side is, is and I say competition, and not <laughs> it's because it is a competition. Um, people who are managing the tourist industry on the French side at that time um, are not basically traditionals and madness. Uh, they are mostly French metropolitans. Mm. They do not see St. Martin as one. They see uh, the French side and they see Paris and St. Martin's, traditional St. Martin's do not consider the, 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 the one people concept as only a concept. It's a reality mm -hmm. it, and, and that we live all the time. But th those people cannot understand, cannot conceive how that could be when there are two legislations. So, of course, um, because some of them are spat businessmen and women, uh, they would look for loopholes in order to benefit of the best of both sides. Uh, so one of the uh, one of the things that that uh, uh, occurred to me hampers uh, us in terms of comp competing with the Dutch side is European norms, because we are uh, up to now a part of the European Union, although not part of the custom union of Europe. Uh, which, which uh, it's a little complex, but um, the, the, we, we are subjected to the norms in terms of construction uh, and in terms of, of classification of hotels, for instance. Um, 
I was told by, by a hotelier once uh, in, in my former function that we cannot compete with the Dutch side because the, the, re the rules, la réglementation, um, in terms of what kind of sheets or cottons you put in a hotel room, the the, the 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 norms the European norms exacts that you that you put that kind of um, material mm. because it's harder to burn or something like that, but it's much more expensive, which the Dutch side was not subjected yeah, to, so the, to, 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 to. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, do, do, uh, for for construction, uh, for instance, uh, constru um, construction, for instance, I was told I don't know how true it is that the steel that you use to, to, to make concrete walls has to respect certain norms uh, um, uh, in Europe in general, in France in particular, uh, that, that are not to be respected automatically. The norms of construction are more um, stringent on the French side than on the Dutch side. That is, was my understanding. So these people that are coming from France, they know they are subjected to those rules but they know also that if they could get away from it, it, it would serve their purpose uh, because it would bring down the cost of, um, of, 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 these, of these operations. Mm -hmm. So they, 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 they like uh, how the Dutch side operates because it is more f free or more uh, less, less expensive. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time... Um, their workers uh, could see m more advantage <laughs> to be working on the French side because, first of all, the minimum wage yeah. is, 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 is different. And then the, the, the social safety net also is... is uh, advantageous. Very, very advantageous. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it did not benefit too much of the local population because if you take, for instance, the, the, the restaurateurs, a lot of restaurants, um, they, they, you see, but this, this is human. This is a human attitude. This is a human behavior. Birds of a feather flock together. Mm -hmm. You cannot get away from it. It's a human behavior unless the law tells you that that's, that natural law is, is no more the law, then that remains the law. So therefore, if, if you have uh, uh, a place, you would look for probably who look like you. <laughs> uh, and, and, and those people, they did search for people who look yeah, like them. Kind, yeah, which we have as well. Good. Yes. I, you, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I, I, I can blame them, but I don't want to blame them because it's a natural and, and yeah, a, I uh, I attitude. I, I, I yeah, I okay. I yeah. So you had young people who worked for the season and um, and uh, the, the 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 summer season in the south of France. And uh, when the summer season is over, you got winter. Then you could come here because winter over there is high season over here. Correct. So there's a lot of jobs opening, but they used the system, probably abused the system at a certain time. I don't think they could get away with it anymore, but at a certain time they abused the system because those young people who worked as servers and barmen in the south of France in the summer would would inscribe to um, unemployment, to the Pôle emploi, Unemployment yeah. Bureau, yeah. get the benefit for being unemployed, so you are covered socially, you, you got uh, some little whatever compensation, and you could come in entities and come to St. Martin in particular and work, and that employer doesn't have to declare you because uh, you don't have your social security because you are in. Uh, so some people did abuse yeah, the yeah. system in yeah. that sense. Yeah, I got you. And that is why it was sometimes more interesting for those employers to employ that type of personnel than to employ the locals here who went to school and, and developed their skills in that field. Yeah, so you know, <laughs> interesting thing, I didn't even think about it uh, in, in this conversation, um, but in, in various ways on both sides, we have ways 
ways of uh, really diving and skipping through these loopholes. <laughs> Abs- absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> you know, if you if you benefit. if you look for them, you're gonna find them. Yes, if you look for them, you'll find them. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So one of the interesting, so one of the things for sure. I would like for you to break down, um, as I mentioned in the introduction, was in understanding um, the collectivity. How exactly does that function, and and why, in in your estimation, was the change from commune to that better or or not as good? Um, can you, I guess, this detail? For me, difference? for me, it's it's a, it's a, it's it was a game changer. It was it was it was a good it was a good thing to do. But that's my opinion. Everybody does not agree with me. Everybody, but if you put yourself in uh, in those nineties years, when the expl- the population explodes, uh, after Lewis ninety uh, five, uh, you have problems. Um, the 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 country is managed by by a local municipal council headed by a mayor, and the the. The competencies. Who, for instance, manages, not manages, maintains the schools? It's a complex uh, operation. The local municipal council, the mayor, is in charge of building and maintaining primary schools and financing them and cleaning them and things like that. The general council of Guadeloupe is in charge of the college junior high level mm-hmm. and the regional council of Guadeloupe is in charge of high schools Lycée. Lycée. Mm. Th- that's how it's shared so that's complex okay <laughs> okay yeah. the 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 Lycée and Concordia high school in Concordia we were lucky to get it we were very lucky to get it because the the guy that was there was a friend with the, with our councillor regional councillor representing here in guadeloupe uh, but some people in guadeloupe were against the regional council building that lycée in saint martin mm. were against it uh, because it was ex- expensive, because they say it was too big for St. Martin. Finally, it's not too big because it's, it, it became over, Overpop- over, yeah. overpopulated at a certain time. Sorry, what about high school? <laughs> but it, it, it's as if whatever you want in terms of schools or in terms of roads, Concordia Road is managed, maintained by the, by the local commune. Mm-hmm. Rue de Holland, the main road that goes from Phillipsburg to Grand Cars, that main road is managed by the regional council. When you reach Colsac, mm-hmm. by Hopi State mm-hmm. up there, mm-hmm. the main road has a roundabout mm-hmm. that permits you to go into Cul-de-Sac. Yes. That Cul-de-Sac road is a local road. Who going to build a roundabout? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> so, Shared costs. But you got to go Guadeloupe to negotiate this thing. Yeah. Okay? So when we changed status in 2007, the roundabout of, of cul-de-sac had begun, but was not finished. But it was paid by the, the region Guadeloupe, the region, regional council. But they wanted to, to f- several years before we changed status, they wanted to stop spending all monies in St. Martin. So I did go to Guadeloupe after as president. <laughs> Yeah, oh, no, oh, I forget to add that, but you, you were the first president of the... No, I was not exactly the first president. Oh, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll come back to that. Okay, all right. And I negotiated with the then president of the region mm-hmm. to add a little finances for us, for, for, for us to finish that roundabout that you were supposed to finish, you didn't finish. He did accept, I have to say. But um, that's a negotiation. Yeah, before the change of status, um, everything... Most of the things that were in, in, in infrastructures um, had to be decided in Guadeloupe. And, and um, if you are a Guadeloupian, where the economy is mostly planting of cane and banana and the tourism was very low at that time, the president of the general council or the regional council He's getting the pressure from his constituents that is close to him. 
that can go in his office, that can go and put whatever pressure they want to put, so he will have a tendency naturally to answer the calls from those that are closer to him than to answer the call from St. Martin. Uh, if I want to see the president of the general council at that time, uh, I had to take a plane, reach Pointe Pete, then take a, a taxi, reach Bastille, then find a hotel in Bastille for me to sleep the night and come back up the next day. Complicated. The general council was in charge of social affairs, which means to say all your files concerning old age senior citizens, mm -hmm. All your files concerning young children that have to be vaccinated, for instance, that's the general counsel who does that. Mm -hmm. If they don't want to put the means to maintain a, a, a Bethany home or old age place because they have other priorities, then you will pass after. So it is that discrepancy between the, 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 the decision-making process where it is placed compared to what you need that motivated uh, the, 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 the leaders in general and the population who became to convinced to that, that if you bring the decision-making process closer to home, mm -hmm. you would have more efficacy in terms of, of um, um, functioning, yeah, yeah, functioning fun, of, yeah. of the country. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. Okay, and uh, yeah, that clarification on okay. the... When, when, yes. when um, the inauguration of the collectivity took place on July 2007, there was that first election. And that first election was won by a, the party that was named, um, um, that was led by Louis Constant Fleming. I was on his list and seventh position. And then, you know, in these elections, the, you have to declare your campaign budgets and things like that. In France, it's very strict. They look, they look at that. Yeah, campaign finance. Yeah. yeah. And um, he, 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 was, he was demoted by the Conseil d'État, State Council. Mm -hmm. So he was, he was rendered ineligible. He, he had to give up his position. Uh, the courts says so. So he remained president from that July until the following July or the following April or May. So almost a year. Almost a year. And then there was an inside fight inside of his party okay. because the number two on the list, a lady, um, claimed that she had all legitimacy to take the number one position and become the president. But the leader of the party had his choice, and his choice was me. I wasn't asking for nothing. You were number seven? Yeah. Okay. His choice, he could have chosen anybody, basically, on his, on his majority party. His choice was me. Um, he insisted, and then the, 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 the majority of the majority insisted also that you don't have a choice, you got to be the president. So I accepted the challenge, that's all. And I became president in, um, in August, uh, in August or July, July, August, August, yeah, vacation of the 2008. 2008. Yes, okay. Now, when that election took place, the election of the president is not a general election. It is done within the, gen the council, the territorial council. Oh. The list is elected by the people Okay, I got you. I but the you. president is elected by... Who is elected into the... Yeah, the uh, council. Like the, the island the, council, basically. The, yeah, the, well, we call it the the territorial, territorial council. council. Yeah, we, and I said that for kind of... Kind of yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. Which, which has a majority and has a minority. Got you, Good. got you. So, when I was elected by the territorial council, that election was also contested by... by, uh, by that lady that feels she, sh she was supposed to be president. It was contested, and she won the contestation. I was demoted. I lost the presidency through courts. Mm. So That's we interesting. <laughs> the following year, in May the next year, we reorganized another election of the president, and she was again candidate, but I won a second time. The, the, I lost the first time because of a technicality. But, but uh, I don't want to get into it. But the following year, we redo, we, we, we run the election, and I did 
maintain my position as president until the end of that mandate in Which 2012. Was, was oh, 2012, okay. 2012, um, yeah. Okay, so then in that case, and what was it like, um, I guess, setting up this new status, functioning as a, as a collectivity? What were some of the challenges that you had to overcome? We, we inherited of um, competencies that we did not have uh, locally. One of the challenges is that, I have to admit, we did not... Um, managed to prepare um, the, the necessary personnel to manage those competencies. We, we, um, we, there's always a comparison between uh, St. Bats and St. Martin. Uh, the, how they managed to, 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 to make it work for them and we did not manage to make it work for us as good as them is because they uh, did prepare um, the, the, the transition better than us. You see, Bruno Magra, who is the president of the collectivity since its inception in 2007, was also the mayor of the commune who prepared the transition for him, for his presidency. The difference in St. Martin is that the mayor was, had no intention of becoming president of the collectivity. Who was the mayor at that time? Albert Fleming. Okay. He never lost an election, eh? but he, he, didn't, he was not a candidate to be president. Gotcha. Okay. So, for me, he did not have the same motivation in terms of preparing the transition than someone who uh, had the intention of picking up the mantle of the presidency just after that. So we were not as well prepared as St. Bats. And we had to play catch up at that time. But what hampers us, hampered us plenty is that situation with the first president, Louis Constant Fleming. It, it took a lot of energy to deal with that. And shortly after I became president, my first vice president um, left the ship. He went on his own. Who was that? Daniel Gibbs. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I didn't know. Okay. Okay. He and, 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 and one or two others. Uh, what I want to say is that those circumstances are circumstances. I wrote a note yesterday. I published it. Um, had a negative impact uh, on, on the efficacy, on the running of the collectivity because you spent a lot of energy just politicking. Uh, on one hand, Sounds and very familiar, man. <laughs> <laughs> and on the on the other hand, <coughs> you had uh, um, this situation with with the uh, people leaving the. Uh, I mean, to say if 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 you just inaugurate your 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 yacht going in the water, you only test it and no bad weather. You only test it and <laughs> you only test it. <laughs> okay. And then you got your, 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 your second in charge who was just leaving. You got to find ways and means to pick up whatever responsibilities he had. I think it had the beginnings. Those difficulties of the beginning has, has had impact, negative impact on us uh, that, that we probably are suffering up to now. Still dealing with it. Yeah, yeah, we are still yeah, dealing with it. Uh, I mean, I Instability is not good for good governance. Yeah, <laughs> worldwide, and, and I want to emphasize island-wide, <laughs> especially. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, political instability, I'm yes, talking yes, about. Yes, political instability, indeed. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm uh, glad you um, basically uh, gave some detail on that. Uh, because of the, course the, the, responsibilities, the responsibilities we acquired mm -hmm. with the new status are important responsibilities, although not as broad as what happens on the other side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but one of the important um, things that we got, not from the general council or the regional council, but from the state directly, is the, the rules on fiscality. And, and that was very important. Then we get things from the, the regional council, like transportation or, or tourism. Then we get the, the competence over the social services concerning the, the senior citizens and, 
and uh, and what they call the ERSA, that the social safety net that is financed locally, although the rules are still done nationally, which is uh, something that yeah, is not exactly ask, normal. There are some things that France still basically dictates. Yeah, absolutely. For for instance, to what degree? For for instance, mm-hmm. for instance, contrary to the commune time. There's the collectivity by itself that will deal with the building and maintenance of the schools from primary to lycée, the whole system. And it, it, is one, it is one entity that deals with all of it now, contrary to what happened before. But the, the state, Paris, has kept the, 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 the teachers. So the curriculum. Uh, I got you. I got you. The teachers, so therefore the curriculum. Is, is, is theirs. Although there are some, uh, let us say, minor adjustments uh, in terms of pedagogy that could be taken uh, locally eventually, um, we, 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 we have been able to develop recently um, uh, to introduce more English in the curriculums and from and the primary schools because uh, um, before time English was only uh, introduced in secondary school, yeah. but now we have it in sometimes in preschool but also and um, and and primary school. It's a good move, but it's not yet enough. It can it can go much further than that because the objective of the of, of a person like me or many of us on the French side is to develop bilingualism in such a way that when you are finished with your high school you are just as ease at Potential. ease in both languages you, 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 you're not you're not floating you're not half the way you have to be perfectly bilingual if you did all your schooling on the French side you're supposed to be perfectly at the least bilingual if not trilingual gotcha so um, I have just about three minutes left okay but uh, the, the the question or the topic I'm going to ask you, I know it's very deep, <laughs> but I guess a very on the surface maybe explanation. Can you detail what the issue of the PPR, PPRN is about? <laughs> um, if it's possible to plan, summarize. Plan, plan uh, particulier de protection or something. I forget how to translate it. Plan particulier. It's anyway, it's all the rules and regulations that um, the government puts in place to protect the population against uh, um, natural disasters. So, um, because of the situation with Irma and that kind of a tsunami, the water raising on the sea shows and, and at high levels, um, the state and its general philosophy, because of some events that took place in metropolitan France, really, which killed a lot of people, uh, they, they said we have to change this. We cannot leave people live on the seashore anymore. Th- that was it. Uh, because officially it's dangerous. The problem is that when you're living in Bretagne and the state don't want you to be on the seashore, you have a thousand miles in the back that you could go. But if you don't want me to stay on the seashore, I only have one kilometer that I could come back. And I can't put everybody a kilometer back. Correct. It becomes very complicated. And there's a second circumstance. Mm. Um, people on St. Martin have a sacred um, attitude towards their land. Yes. A sacred attitude towards their land, and this dates back to the abolitions of slavery time. You know, St. Martin suffered uh, four different, ab- the French side, four different abolitions, not suffered, let's say, um, lived four different abolitions of slavery. 1794, the French Revolution abolished the slavery the first time. Napoleon put it back in 1802. In 1833, England freed its colonies. Anguilla was concerned. So St. Martin was concerned. And 48, the French side was concerned. And in 63, the, the 1863, the Dutch side was concerned. So the people in their subconscious mind and the collective subconscious of the people, after the, 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 the French abolition, land was sold and distributed to the farmer slaves. And that was something sacred to them. That was an objective, a life objective to own a piece of land. 
and that is always a uh, con to me very present in the uh, subconscious mind of the people you okay, understand <laughs> well um, Mr. Gongs, I'd like to thank you so much for coming and sharing all this knowledge I do look forward to having you back and no it problem. certainly was a pleasure thank you very much it was my pleasure too okay so okay. to our viewers and listeners I really hope that you enjoy this conversation and do take care and thank you for listening